Hello, this is Reed Tillery. In this video, we're going to review magnetic declination. This whole issue of magnetic declination, or magnetic variation as mariners call it, is really pretty simple. But for some reason, the whole topic tends to confuse people. I know it took me a while to make sense of it. Any confusion regarding declination probably stems from how it was explained. So with that in mind, my goal for this video is to explain this topic clearly and simply to try to avoid any unnecessary confusion. To start with, let's see how a compass works. A compass needle aligns itself with the Earth's magnetic field, causing one end of the needle to, to point in a northerly direction. But normally, that end of the needle doesn't point to exactly true north, but it points some bit to the west of north or some bit to the east of north. When the compass needle points to the west of north, that's called west declination or west variation. And when the compass needle points to the east of north, that's called east declination or east variation. One way to find declination where you are is to look at your topo map and there you will see an illustration showing the declination in your area. Uh, looking at this illustration, for instance, this line right here the one with the star represents true north, and this line right here, the one with the little harpoon looking ending, represents magnetic north. So the declination would be the difference between magnetic north and true north, which in this case is two and a half degrees. Now many topo maps use the universal transverse Mercator grid and this grid or, or the north-south line for this grid don't run exactly north and south and so in addition to having a true north and a magnetic north there is a third indicator of north and that's called grid north, and that's this line right here. To be exact, if you're using the UTM grid lines on the map to help you find directions, then what you would want to do is to use what's called the grid magnetic angle as your, as your declination. So in this case, the grid magnetic angle would be the two and a half degrees between true north and magnetic north less the just about one degree angle between grid north and true north so you would use one and a half degrees if you're using a map that has the UTM grid on it and you are in fact using those north-south lines uh, to uh, help you find direction that said, usually the angle between grid north and true north for recreational land navigational purposes, this angle is usually so small that we can disregard it. So you can consider the declination to be the difference between magnetic north and true north. And in this case, that's two and a half degrees. You can do that if you like. You don't have to. In fact, it's, you're probably more accurate using the, the grid magnetic angle, but if that gets confusing to you, don't worry about it. Just use the difference between magnetic north and true north. Looking now at dealing specifically with west declination, all you have to remember is if you want to go from a map bearing, sometimes called a true bearing, to a magnetic bearing, sometimes called a compass bearing, you simply add the declination. Then if you want to go from a magnetic bearing back to a map bearing, you simply subtract the declination. That's all there is to it. If you can remember that and you're in an area of west declination, you've got the whole declination thing down. But let's say that even that's hard to remember. Let's use a little illustration to help us logically remember what we need to do. 
I'm going to draw a vertical line here and then a horizontal line here. I'm going to let this vertical line represent true north and then I'm going to draw in a line to represent magnetic north. Then I'm going to draw in the angle or the the bearing from magnetic north down to this direction and then I'm going to draw in the same angle from true north down to that direction. Now which of these two angles is larger? Well obviously it's magnetic north so when the declination is west magnetic north will always be or, or when the declination is west a magnetic bearing will always be larger than a true bearing. So if you want to convert from map to magnetic you'll need to add the declination because the magnetic bearing will be larger than the true bearing. Then if you want to go from a magnetic bearing back to a map bearing you'll need to subtract the declination because the map bearing or the true bearing is always smaller than the magnetic bearing. And that's the way it works with west declination and that's all there is to west declination. So once again I suggest if you live in an area of west declination just learn this and learn this well and after just a short while this will become second nature to you and you'll be correcting your compass for declination with no problem. Then if you go to an area of east declination just do the opposite of what you normally do and by then you'll know so well what you normally do that doing the opposite will be no problem. So now let's look at some specific problems dealing with west declination. Let's look at our diagram again. We'll say in this case that the declination is 10 degrees west and we can't remember which one to add or which one to subtract. So we draw our little diagram and we see that the magnetic bearings are larger than the map bearings. So we know our magnetic bearings are larger. So if the map bearing, let's say that we take a bearing off the map and it's 100 degrees, then the magnetic bearing will be 110 degrees. If we take a reading on a distant mountaintop and it's 140 degrees to that distant mountaintop, we know that this magnetic bearing has got to be larger. So if we look at our map, we would expect to find that mountaintop at 130 degrees from our position. Let's say that uh, we take a bearing off the map and it says that we need to travel at 45 degrees to get to where we want to go. So we would dial into our compass 55 degrees. And you see these magnetic bearings here are always larger than the map bearings. And that, those are three examples of dealing with west declination. So that's all there is to west declination. And now we'll look at east declination. So now looking at east declination, if you want to go from a map angle to a map magnetic angle you subtract the declination and if you want to go from a magnetic angle back to a map angle you add the declination. Keep in mind I'm using the word angle and bearing interchangeably. So if we forget how to do that I've already drawn in our, our little diagram here so this is we'll say the direction in which we want to travel and if I draw the bearing from true north down to our intended direction of travel and then I draw the bearing from magnetic north down to our, intention, our intended direction of travel, which of these two bearings is larger? In this case, it's the true bearing. So with east declination, true bearings, as you can see from this diagram, are always larger than magnetic bearings. 
So if you go from a magnetic bearing back to a map bearing or a true bearing, you're going to have to add the declination because, as you can plainly see, the true bearings are larger than the magnetic bearings. And if you go from a map bearing to a magnetic bearing, you can now see by this illustration why you should subtract the declination because the magnetic bearing is smaller than the map bearing. And that's all there is to east declination. The same with west declination. If you live in an area of east declination, my suggestion is to go out and just learn this and spend a few days working with this and it will get to be uh, so second nature to you that if you were to go to an area of west declination, you could just easily do the opposite. And if you get confused, you can always draw this this diagram and it'll tell you exactly what to do. So now we'll look at a few examples of working with east declination. I've drawn our little diagram in here and once again our little diagram shows us that true bearings, that is the true north bearings, are larger than the magnetic bearings. So here's the larger of the two. So if the true bearings are larger, we'll know that any time we work with declination, if, if our true bearing is not larger than our magnetic bearing, then something is wrong. So in our example here, the declination is 10 degrees east. So you look at your map and you realize that you need to travel in the direction of 220 degrees. What direction are you going to dial into your compass? Are you going to dial 230 or 210? Well, which bearing is larger, the true bearing or the magnetic bearing? In this case, the true bearings are, are larger, so you'll dial 210 degrees into your compass because you'll need to subtract. And what if a distant mountain peak is 150 degrees from your position according to your compass, in what direction on the map would you expect to find that mountain peak? Well, once again, true bearings are larger, so you would expect to find that at 160 degrees. You would add the declination. And those are a couple of examples of working with east declination. The diagram here is most helpful because if you get turned around, it always, if you draw in the, the true north and the magnetic north line and draw these angles, you can plainly see which angle should be larger. And you just keep that in mind when converting from a, a map angle to a magnetic angle. I hope this video has proven useful to you. For more information on land navigation, be sure to visit my website at www.floridaadventuring.com. So until next time, this is Reed Tillery reminding you that no matter what your situation in life, there's always another adventure.